All right. Good afternoon, Ethan Cassiotis. Welcome to the podcast. How are you? Thank you. Um, great, thank you. And how about yourself, Jackie? Really well. This sticky afternoon, all of a sudden there's been some rain. <laughs> um, yes. So welcome. I mean, we did a podcast swap, which is super amazing and um, real pleasure to connect with you again. You're really quite powerful in the space of um, business coaching and um, I've just signed up to one of your webinars too, so that will be great. Um and I wanted to bring you on today to really talk about um, a support element. So when people are facing challenges, um, bringing support in, particularly focused on business. But before we jump into business so much, I wanted to ask, have you faced any legal challenges yourself in your life, Korea? Yeah, um, you know, indirectly, I have faced some uh, legal challenges uh, just with family matters, right? And I think mm. um, you know, one way or another, um, our grandparents or people pass away right in our family and and um, that can um, you know unfortunate times of course but then depending on um, you know what happens there is sometimes there can be family conflicts with you know wills and and things like that um, and you don't normally know these um, you know until it comes out uh, at the time and then for whatever reason, um, you know sometimes family members um, can change a little bit um, whether they're um, you know, wanting more that that was there, or maybe they don't think it's fair, or maybe, mm. you know, they, they need money at the time, who knows, there could be a variety of reasons of why I think family <laughs> can sometimes go, you know, against each other. Um, and, you know, it wasn't directly on me, but, you know, with, um, you know, being in the vicinity there and, um, and seeing just um, how things can turn quite quickly and then you know sort of you know getting involved in a way just to keep the peace a little bit and and also to um you know just keep things moving because I think a lot of the time emotions come out right like especially in these times um so people can get very emotional can make rash decisions maybe can argue and make things worse with the relationships at that time so mm -hmm. I was you know more of the uh, the steady um normal uh let's just say neutral emotional person um mm. in this time for you know different parties here um there to really um just make sure it was moving forward and, and just getting the facts right and not trying to you know um get too caught up in in what was happening um mm. so yeah challenging times um but i think you know it was important that you know, we obviously we had lawyers right you can't do the you know if, if it's not going to work by yourselves obviously you want to do it amicably where possible yeah. but if it's not happening and people aren't coming to the table, then you've got to get people that know what they're doing and getting lawyers involved that um, know, know about this. And, you know, even um, sometimes, you know, you know, if it's not working as well at the start, um, you know, be open to changing as well. I think if, if it's not a good fit, um, you know, with someone that's looking after it at that initial engagement, don't just necessarily go with the cheapest person, um, you know, go with someone that actually knows what they're doing and you feel it's a, a good fit um, between you because it's probably, you know, it might be going for a while, put it that way, um, in terms of these cases, depending on how complex the situation is. So I think um, getting the right people involved, um, getting support, maybe of family members or, or, or people around you just yeah. emotionally, um, you know, can help as well but again the right people and and just making sure you're on top of things um to keep yeah moving forward mm, yeah thank you for sharing something personal like that and um i do want to dive a little bit deeper because you touched on so many important things which i think will be really helpful um and a conflict like that as you said can be very emotional and yet the situation is emotional without the conflict because you have all the grief and all the things around you and then all of a sudden you have the shock of a family member potentially reacting in a way that you didn't expect them to um, and then all of a sudden you have all the turmoil of conflict with people that you didn't expect to. Um, and so then... With all that emotion, as you say, sometimes there can't be forward movement and there's just stuck in emotions. Um, so, I mean, great that they had you too being fairly neutral. Um, how was it that you could stay neutral? What did you call on to, and what resources in yourself did you call on not to get so um, caught up like others around you? 
Yeah, I think it was a, a benefit that it didn't directly affect me, let's yeah. say, in terms of, the, you know, the case there. Um, I was, you know, yeah. I guess maybe in, indirectly, um, you know, affected, but it wasn't mm. me specifically. So I could okay. look at it more objectively. And I think yeah. this is the power of someone external, whether it's a family member, whether it's mm. a coach or an advisor or someone is very, very powerful, right? Um, mm -hmm. That area there. So I think that was, that was one thing um, that allowed me to do that. And, you know, I think understanding who you have in your circles as well like mm -hmm. um you know i was i was fortunate in a way that i lived um with a lawyer as a housemate um uh, yes. during that time as well so ah. that's a bonus not everyone gets that opportunity <laughs> but um but you know but that was more around the business side um, yeah. necessarily but there was also you know you know understanding just how law works and it's very logical and things like that mm -hmm. so i was i was always very curious and i think that's a it's a great point about people is um, you know, yes, law can be big or anything can be big in what you do mm. in life or business, but having that curiosity lens and going, okay, well, how do things work? Asking the right questions, wanting to learn more about it, because as you learn more about it, it becomes easier. It's less stress, less overwhelm on the process. Um, so it's just asking the right questions. Um, you know, it's like whoever I go to as an advisor, whether it's a lawyer or an accountant or anyone, I'm always asking a lot of questions. So I understand like what's happening next, not just like what's the question now, but thinking many moves ahead. So yeah. then I can plan and go, okay, well, this is coming up. Do we need any documents for this? Like, you know, like how can we plan? I think it's, it's so important. So then we're not just reacting at, at certain times. We can predict things and, and, and that to happen, which I think is important um, in whatever we do. So I think that logical frame of mind of business that I brought to like a family situation helped um, to move things along um, to at least, you know, get an outcome in a relatively decent amount of time. Um, you know, that sometimes I, I couldn't necessarily control what happens with the relationship. Sometimes relationships break down and, and that's that, but you know, at least you can move it forward and, and get an outcome at least. Yeah. Uh, the curiosity piece is really interesting to me. And uh, when you said curiosity, I know that it's an element of uh, or a principle of NLP as well. But I also thought um, there's a principle of attacking the problem and not the person. And perhaps the element of curiosity can help with that. Do you see how those interact potentially? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> me being yeah, an NLP master practitioner as well, so powerful um, on understanding people's mindsets. And, you know, a lot of the time, they say like we're a mirror, right? So, so everything we see in someone else is actually what's in ourselves. So this yeah. is a, maybe a little bit controversial, confronting. right? Of confronting for people. Um, so if you if you're really saying, "Oh, this person's this," it's actually probably something that's in yourself. So just yeah. be aware of that. Um, and a lot of the time, people, you know, for example, say you can't do something, then it's actually that they can't do it, right? It's it's the mm. reflection. Um, mm. So don't you don't necessarily have to listen to them or whatever, you know, it's like, oh, you, you can't deal with this process. It's like, well, that's your opinion, but I can do what I believe I can do, right? So just from an empowering perspective, I think that's important just as an awareness piece. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with NLP, um, you know, and understanding this curiosity, it's that there's the old saying, like, treat people how you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. um, but that is actually incorrect. <laughs> the actual correct saying is treat people how they want to be treated. Oh, so, right. Right. So because we always because we're all different. Our everyone's perception in this world is different. Mm -hmm. We all have different, even just standard representational systems. Like some people might be more visual, others more auditory, others more kinesthetic, others more audio digital. So that's like a simple sense, but then there's so many other factors in how we are as people. So knowing that yes, if we triple how we want to be treated. People that are similar to us might get that, but yeah. most of the people won't because everyone is different. So having a length, you know, a lens of curiosity allows us to basically go, okay, well, why is this person reacting in this way or saying this particular thing? Mm -hmm. I'm curious. And then ask questions more. It's it's sort of getting into a little bit of coaching here, um, mm -hmm. there, but just being curious and going, well, because normally what someone says to you is a bit more surface level um, to initially, normally there's something further down there and, and if you can just be curious and ask a few more questions without you know having a high emotional intelligence where possible where you're not reacting emotionally you might be feeling some emotion but you can sort of feel it but still being able to process and and have a conversation is extremely powerful whether it's you know in business or in life um you know very powerful so i think having that curiosity going like what's going on for you getting the better understanding and and i think when you understand that, then you can communicate with this person better and listening out to their language as well. Like I mentioned about those representational systems, if you can hear 
someone using more visual language or auditory language or kinesthetic language, like looking, you know, sounds like feeling or whatever like that, then, you know, mirroring that language as well, because that's what's going to actually connect to them, um, you know, if you have a different representational system. So there's little little things like this. I've now made you aware of it. So hopefully mm-hmm. that you, you are paying a bit more attention, um, you know, with, with how you're interacting with people and then you can, yeah, communicate and, and connect better. Yeah, they are really helpful. And again, I suppose it's building resources and building skills for people. Um, Part of the problem, though, I think, as you're talking, is that often in conflict, it's also someone we've been in relationship for a while. And so we get to the point maybe where we don't care anymore how they feel, unfortunately, which causes the conflict maybe to escalate. And so maybe moving it away from family and talking about business partners who've been partners maybe for five to 10 years and maybe things aren't panning out as they as rosy as they'd hoped them to um and they just start withholding what the other person needs just because they can because they're frustrated or they've got their own emotion going on how do you think that we can start breaking some of those cycles where you just um you automatically withhold what the other person needs <laughs> Yeah, it's a really challenging situation and a great question as well. And, um, you know, apparently, unfortunately, the stats show that most business partnerships fail, right? So just understand that, you know, when you go into business with somebody else as like a co-founder partner, whatever you want to call it like that, um, most of them fail. It's extremely high percentage. Mm. So, but at the same time, it can be very great and not all of them fail. Um, Mm. So you know, understanding, obviously you want somebody that maybe has not the same strengths as you, but is different in a way. So you complement each other. That's why they can be very beneficial um, in, in what you do in business. And you've got somebody on your team, you've got momentum, you know, be able to bounce off ideas instead of just trying to do everything yourself, which is great. So I think really key, it's understanding your vision. What's the vision? Like, what do you actually want to do? And just don't just think about the business in general, but like project ahead going, okay, we've got maybe a 10 year mission. What's that? But like, what's our bigger play? Like, you know, how long, if we're going to be doing this business until we retire or like, what what is our play here that we want to do? So really understanding long-term what people want to do, being really clear from that from the start and even doing a values exercise. I think a values exercise is extremely important. Most mm-hmm. people don't do this, even for employees, right? Or anybody mm-hmm. that you do this for, but especially with business partners, um, because if there's a values difference there and you may not know it necessarily, um, but as you start to work together, it will start to come out naturally that there's a values difference here. Um, and this could be detrimental, right? Like in terms of maybe someone's like, you know, I just want to work three hours a day and someone else is a workaholic that works 10 hours a day. Um, you know, it's like, well, I'm putting all this extra effort in and you're not, right? This is a very simple example, but that could create a lot of tension, right? Like yeah. in the relationship here. So understanding like what are these values and it could be anything and there's a lot of different values exercises i know general ones like the martini has has a values exercise um there's, there's many out there you can just google and, and find but even just questioning what these values are of everyone and understanding what the top ones are and i think that's really important so you're, you're trying to basically stop any issue happening right from the start it's like mm-hmm. having that really good base are we on the same trajectory do we want the same thing um so like you know some people might be like i want to sell the business in five years the other person might be like i want to i want this to be my baby for the next until i retire for 30 plus years whatever like that so you know these questions are really important because then if you get to the point where they want to get out they want to sell and it's challenging that's really important and i think you know from a legal standpoint if we add that into partnerships as well is having a shareholders agreement like most a lot of people don't have it. Like there's the standard, um, you know, business agreement like constitution that you do when you create a company as an example together. But there's a separate agreement that most people don't think about is a shareholders agreement. And that's extremely important because that really uh, adds a bit of this extra flavor in, but also allows you to make decisions when there's maybe a bit of a conflict or, you know, how you're making decisions for different things in the business there. Um, just lays it out. Otherwise it's, it's gray. Um, mm-hmm. And then you can, then you have to get more lawyers and more time and energy and, and money involved when, you know, it would be a lot less um, if you had that in place. So really speaking to a great lawyer like yourself, um, you know, that knows these things and getting yourself set up from the start. It's business, it's foundational, like anything, right? Get your foundations right, get your, you know, dotting your I's and crossing your T's and all of that. But I think, you know, from a 
from a connection perspective, it's understanding the values. And then if you have those agreements in place, if something does happen um, by chance, whatever it is, okay, cool, let's follow this. Let's do what we have to do. Um, do you want to buy out of this business? What you know, Whatever that situation is, um, you know, there's things in there about mediators and other people, you know, if they need to get involved in, in those areas. So um, otherwise, yeah, it could just be, um, you know, fall on deaf ears. So I think it's really, really important to do that. Um, set yourself up and then that way hopefully you, you know you want to obviously uh, plan for success and focus on on the success of this um, if you do all these things but if it doesn't then at least you've got something to fall back on yeah no good point and I, I love that that prevention is better than cure just like in medicine and health it's the same in law we want the I's dotted and the T's crossed before there's a problem. Um, but as you say, like the shareholder agreement also focuses on positive things, not just just in case things go wrong. So great, great topic there. Um, and you also touched on earlier about finding, um, you know, the right support around you in terms of a legal professional or in terms of you mentioned accountants and um, coaches and other business advisors. How do you find the right person? A huge question, I know, but <laughs> how? Yeah, it's a great question. And mm. uh, it, it's not a one size fits all answer, let's say. No. Mm. And I think this is based on the, the simple answer. I'll go into a bit more detail, of course, is that you've got to base it on your like your intuition, your instincts, your gut feeling, right? Whatever mm. word you want to use there of, of how you make decisions. Love that. Uh, because not you know it's it's a unique thing just because someone's really good at something you may not you know there might not be a fit there or you're getting this feeling going i don't know if this is the right person for me and then you meet somebody else and go i really connect to this person you know my, my instincts my intuition my gut feeling saying yep let's do this so really being you know if we go from a personal level being in tune with your body your feelings and when these come up because it's right most of the time um, and, it, and it goes the opposite way as well. Sometimes you get a bad feeling. Like if you've ever gone into a room and someone's talking to you, you go, something's off about this person. Like, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's off. Like that's that's a feeling that you need to, you know, think about and go, okay, maybe I, I shouldn't be doing business or catching up with this person or whatever that is um, mm -hmm. in that context. So understanding it from both ways, um, what that feeling is. Now, you know, obviously there's, there's ways of um, being connected through people that you know. Um, but sometimes there can be some bias if you're introduced saying, oh, yeah, you know, my my mate next door, he's, he's a great accountant and he's, you know, maybe got a, a practice with three clients only. And um, does he really know what he's doing and and everything like that? Uh, no, no offense to who, the, you mm. know, imaginary person, but may, are they the right person depending on what your goals are with their skill level? Right. Or maybe if you're wanting to create this big, you know, eight figure business, maybe you want an accountant that's worked with bigger clients like this before that has, you know, that knows what they're doing and what's coming up for you like that. So understanding like what skills do they have? Because like lawyers, not every lawyer is the same. Lawyers have, you know, some, some can, some can be quite good broadly, but some, you know, focus on certain areas of law. So mm -hmm. understanding that what is their speciality, just because someone refers you to someone doesn't mean that they're the best person. So make sure you do your own analysis, your own due diligence and ask the questions. Again, like we mentioned about questions is, mm -hmm. you know, it's like interviewing the person. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, just because someone introduces you or the other option is you find them online, like you do some Googling, you know, you find look on social media, you look on YouTube, maybe like whatever it is, there's, there's a lot of ways that you can search for people to, to do that. But, you know, interview them, go, listen, I'm not just going to work with you. Um, I want to ask you, you know, certain questions. So think about what you would really want um, in an accountant um, asking about their skills, experience, or a lawyer or a coach mentor, if you want someone to really help you, like, um, you know, have, you know, if you're looking at a coach mentor, have they, you know, run their own businesses before? What, what, you know, did they have certain qualifications or skills or certifications and things that, you know, that tools that they can help you to move forward? Um, you know, what, are, you know, what have they achieved? Um, you know, who are they connected to? There's, you know, cause there's relationships in there, et cetera, et cetera. And, and everyone has different strengths and weaknesses um, just generally, right. In, in what we do. So understanding, um, you know, sometimes you need multiple people like, not necessarily in terms of law and accountants, but in coaches and mentors, I have multiple coaches and mentors in different areas, like in, in business or in life, you know, or even specifically sometimes in certain areas of business, maybe because they might be there. Now, some people like I have an MBA, so I've got a very good board knowledge as well as having NLP with mindset. So I've, 
I'm, I'm one of few maybe that I can look at all areas of business, but other, you know, people that are coaches in that maybe might only focus on a few key areas of business. So understanding that if that's the case, then where are you going to get this other help from if they don't help you with that? So asking the right questions to know what their skill level is and, and where they're going to help you, is there going to be a gap there that you need to fill with somebody else? So it's, it's really asking the right questions, finding who's around and, and, you know, having that student mindset, I think is the most important thing. Um, I think if you let your ego, your pride take over and like, oh, I'm really good. I'm really good at business or whatever it is. And I can do this myself. You just block out so much and, you know, you're not inviting in help. And sometimes it's the hardest thing to ask for help. Uh, and, and, you know, I know, you know, not trying to be gender biased here. I know there's a lot of women um, listening here, but it's harder for men, right, to ask this. Um, really? I find, you know, yeah, like even myself, like I'm talking from my own experience or when I've been in other masterminds yeah. um, where, you know, my, my wife is the first one, to, you know, to put her hand up, you know, as an example, um, in, in a different context that I've been and I've seen it in other masterminds more. Now, it's just a generalization, whatever it is there. But I think, um, you know, being okay to ask help, there's no... Um, dumb questions or anything like that um, you know we need to move forward and normally a lot of the time especially in a group sense is that you're actually help serving everybody else because other people might have wanted to ask that question and you've just answered it for more other people out there whether it's in a one-on-one -on -one sense like a, a coaching session or, or a podcast interview but then people might listen to this after or it might be in a room you know a group of people on a on a zoom or in person wherever the question is asked so uh, I think it's it's really important to yeah have that mentality of, of asking the question, be okay to answer it. And then, and, and constantly looking and growing. Um, yeah. There's, there's a few, few tips there on, on what you're doing. And, and, but it really comes back down to, like I said, your, your intuition, your instincts, your gut feeling on this is the right person and then um, going with it. Um, and, you know, Richard Branson says, make decisions quickly and change them slowly. Right. Or there's many sort of people like that. So trust that feeling. Now, also a little caveat on this, right? So that feeling can be different for people. I'll just mention this. So myself, I'm more of an instincts person. I can tell instantly with my gut feeling here, right? My instincts, my intuition. My, my wife might take a little bit longer with hers to make that decision. So don't feel always that you have, to, if you're one of those people going, I don't know right now, I need a few minutes, a few hours, maybe a day or two, potentially if it's a big decision, mm. sometimes you need that. So don't feel like you have to rush and make the decision on whatever that decision is. Um, you can always say, hey, can we come back to this tomorrow or let's chat later today or whatever like that so you can sit on it. So if you're one of those people that needs to do that and my wife you know, is similar like that, um, then you know, you know, be open with the person, whatever that is, and just saying, hey, let's have a chat shortly and now now that i'm aware of this i can't make my wife make decisions instantly because i know that she's like this right so from a relationship perspective and this could be a partner relationship like that or it could be a business partner relationship it could be any relationship understanding how people make decisions is really important don't force someone into do something that it's not natural for them and you know against what they do so understanding that we make decisions a little bit differently and being open curious to that and going okay well let's work together um to move forward as well yeah uh that is so good. Um, I've been reflecting on this a lot myself lately about um, decision making and and intuition. And um, I think I'm very similar to you. I've I've learned to trust the gut feel, and it is very instant. And then if I start questioning it and want um, confirmation of that gut feel, it doesn't come, and then I end up making the wrong decision if I'm second guessing myself. Um, but then looking at my husband, it sounds like my husband's a bit like your wife. He needs like two or three days of mulling it over and going through this emotional process because it's not even looking at the pros and cons. It's just, should I do this? Should I do that? And I'm sitting back having made the decision. I just have to watch him go this two or three days. And I'm like, yep, yeah, we come finally around to the same point at the end, <laughs> yes. which is good. But I knew a couple of days ago where we were going. <laughs> I love it. You know, yeah, it's interesting, right? The awareness, um, but then you know, you allow them to do that process, and then mm -hmm. um, it works out for the best. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. And it tends to be the right decision then, instead of uh, so the trust factor is really important. 
Um, and uh, I often say it's the vibe about someone when you you get the the vibe when you're in the room with someone. Um, and I always recommend people shop around and have, you know, meet with a few people before they decide because um, professionals are really good at portraying confidence and you do come out feeling, oh, yeah, this person's got this. But then if you actually meet with a few people, you see that there is a difference in the vibe, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, mm. Confidence is one thing, like, the, you know, being influential like that, but actually mm. going, okay, who is this person as a person, like their energy, whether that's in person or over a Zoom, you can still feel it mm -hmm. um, in the way that they are and go, yeah, I really connect more with this person here. This is, yeah, the best one. Mm. I love it. I love that you've said that. <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, now, I wanted to come back again and tap into some of what you do yourself as well, because uh, you know how to be objective, you know how to feel the feeling and still be able to not make an emotional decision. Um, what are some of the, the practices that make you self-aware enough to be able to do that? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think having growth as as a you know mm. as a decently high value or human need even I, I think is important um is the saying if we're not growing we're dying so i'm always looking to better myself and grow uh, i wasn't always like this and yes occasionally i'm not perfect like i i do get emotional sometimes yeah. right so just to be aware i'm not like a robot or anything like that, <laughs> that does it. so we're all we're all human and um i had a chat with my wife the other day and um i got a bit emotional uh, you know it was something it doesn't happen often right um and she was like wow um you know she saw me in this in this moment and mm -hmm. you know, we, we have a you know it, it was gone within you know, a few minutes. And then we had a chat um, a little bit later, like an hour or two later. And I just said, um, she goes, what do I do in that moment? I said, you know what, just try and be objective or just, you know, leave the room if you need to just say, I'll, I'll be back once you've got out of that emotion. And, um, you know, it's like, it's okay to feel it. I think having someone in your life that is understandable that sometimes you need to get the emotion out and not judging you for that and just going, <clears throat> they're just having their little moment. Um, so I just want to make that clear that it ha happens to me. Um, I'm sure it happens to a lot of people and being someone going, okay, well, I'll just leave the room. If it's not happening right now, we can come back and we can talk about it. And then being, you know, being fine to talk about it, not being pissed off for days and not talking yeah. after it's like, you know, you've got that communication. That's what it's about um, there. So I think, I think having that growth um, element there, and I've learned a lot about emotional intelligence and, and, and about emotions and that, in knowing that if you're emotional and this is not just negative emotions, if you're angry or something, right, which obviously you can make bad decisions then and say bad things, but it could be even high emotion. If you're really excited, you can actually make bad decisions as well because you're really excited and you're, you're overlooking things that you may, you know, actually look at normally when you're there. So whether it's positive or negative, it can affect the decisions that you make. Um, so just be aware um, when you're aware, when you are aware of that, it's like, okay. Well, I need to be more in a, in a neutral emotional state when I'm making a decision. Um, so that helps me to bring me back. So I'm in these states. I'm like, okay, um, just you know, what am I doing right now? Do I need to make a decision? Let me let me you know make sure I'm regulating and and asking more questions and then you know getting to where I need to go to make that decision. I think that's important. Um, and yeah, it, it's it's really. Um, it, it, it's interesting. And I think everyone's got a different emotional journey. Everyone is, is more emotional than others. Um, so just be aware that, um, you know, what the way I work might not be exactly the way that you work. I'm just sharing how I work and, and look at emotions. Uh, but I think it's just being aware that there are so many emotions. I know my wife, she gave me um, a piece of paper that had like, I don't know, it was like a hundred or 200 emotions on it. I was like, <laughs> wow, is there, is there that many emotions like over here? And people don't realize this, right? And and it's just, it's having that awareness um, that there are these things that pop up and go, okay, well, how do I work through these things? And sometimes you have to actually feel them to process them because they can get stuck in you at the same time. So men or me or whoever, like, you know, generally um, speaking, can bottle things a little bit more, um, mm -hmm. you know, whereas my wife or other people that I've seen with women, um, you know, easier at processing them and, um, and it's okay to do that. Obviously, we don't just want to sit there crying the whole time, all day, if, if things happen, because it's not going to be relevant. But there will be times that you need to do that to help process the emotions. So don't just think, oh, 
I, I'm going to be emotional regulate and I'm just not going to show any emotion from now on. No, that's not the case. There's time for that um, when you need to and, and have people there. Um, but there's also time that if you're in a business sense, whether you're working or, you know, business owner or, you know, you're dealing with people in legal matters, things like that, mm -hmm. that are important, where you've got to make it decisions that are important going forward, then yeah, not allowing that to go out. And maybe sometimes you need to go for a walk. Maybe you need to get out, change your state. If it's like that, if this person's triggering you, maybe you have to say, hey, um, um, I just need to just, you know, walk out of the room, whatever reason you want to give them at that time. Do you mind if we just chat in five minutes or 10 minutes, if it's really affecting you at that time and you think, I'm going to say something probably bad at this time, just excuse yourself and allow yourself to emotionally regulate and then come back to it um, at that time. So there's little tactics like this, depending on where your emotional intelligence is, but there's a really great uh, book. I think it was, yeah, there's so many of them out there. I've learned a lot, but I think it's emotional intelligence 2.0 or something. So I, I just, I would just say, um, you know, read more, understand more how they work and then how you work and then how you can, yeah, get better at it. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah. A couple of great things in there. And it sounds very much about awareness being the key there as well, really. Um, knowing yourself, um, having a better understanding of others around you if you can. And um, uh, asking questions seems to be something that you keep coming back to as well. It seems to be a way that you regulate yourself um, and a way of staying curious and a way of building resources and learning for yourself. So um yeah, you're definitely not afraid of asking questions, I'm sure. <laughs> definitely not. Um, so true, but it depends on the situation. Sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I can still be, I'm not perfect, right? I need to, you know, I think we can always ask more questions, um, mm. to just be aware. But if you ask a question, especially in an emotional moment, it, it allows you to not necessarily react because you're putting the focus more on the other person. So let's say you're feeling something and you're allowing it to just process and that, be curious and go, okay, well, can you tell me a bit more about this or whatever? And then that can allow you to process it if it happens at the time um, to good form because it's not about you in that moment. You're learning more about the other person. So just having the sensory acuity or situational awareness, there's a lot of words here where you can still take in the information while doing this because sometimes it can be challenging depending on the person to do this, but, but believe that you can. And I think you know, I'm big on mindset, right? So if you think, oh, I can't do that, or, you know, I never do that, or it's impossible, whatever limiting language you use, mm -hmm. think the opposite of that. Say, I can do this. I, you know, I can uh, emotionally regulate and ask questions and do this in the moment when I need to. And, and tell yourself that every day, if that's a challenge for you or whatever the challenge is in your life or business that you need to overcome, um, you know, you, excuse the French a little bit. One of my coaches said, you got to bullshit your brain, right? Um, yeah. Basically a little bit. So, um, cause if, if you think you can't, then you can't, but if you think you can, eventually the unconscious mind will take over and go, okay, well, Ethan or Jackie thinks they can now. So I'm going to believe that I can. And it's just yeah. suggesting it to yourself in the present tense, not a future thing. Make sure it's in the present tense um, there that eventually you know, you will, um, you'll believe that um, over time. There's other techniques and tools, but in a very simple sense that anybody can do, um, that can work. It would just take some time depending on, on what that is. So there's a couple extra tips there too. You've given us so much, Ethan. You've just so many resources. What can we give back to you or what, what would you like the audience to do for you or where would you like to send them? Yeah, thanks, um, Jackie. So yeah, if anyone here is a business owner, or maybe, you know, even aspiring um, to, to start a business, um, feel free to reach out. Uh, you know, I've got my website, with his, which is ethancassiotis.com. Uh, my name, I'm sure it'll be um, in the show notes there. I've also got a link tree. Um, so on there, it's just link tree slash Ethan Cassiotis. And um, that way you can book a, you know, like a free 15 minute um, Zoom session with me where I can help you and give you some advice or maybe even, um, you know, point you in the right direction because I'm extremely connected um, as well. So, so, you know, if it's not a good fit for me or be just like, hey, do you know where I can get this type of help? Um, I know huge amounts of people. Um, so that way, you know, I can even point people. I like connecting people in the right direction. Uh, I've got my Business Growth Summit, like you mentioned, uh, that you were uh, signed up to there. So businessgrowthsummit.com.au. So I offer a lot of free, um, great value on business. So if you want to learn more from me uh, and a free sense, just go there and um, you can register. It's just virtual for now. So you can, wherever you are, um, easy to um, connect to that. 
Um, but otherwise, I'm all on all the socials like LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and that um, to to connect as well. Um, there's only one of me online, Ethan Cassiotis, so it's very easy to find. So uh, yeah, any of those areas there. But always happy to have a chat uh, if you want to book that yeah that meeting link with me or, or connect in any other way. I, I'd love to uh, yeah have a chat and see if I can help you. Wonderful. You've been so generous with your time and your tips and also very generous with offering people so much free resources as well. So wanted to thank you again and really great again to connect with you. Um, and I hope our audience gets so much out of this. Lovely. Thanks a lot, Jackie. And you're doing an awesome job as well.